Hello and welcome to the finals of the World Championship in Through the Ages. We started at the beginning of the year with 1120 players and now after having played 7 stages we are now arrived at the last stage of the tournament. One last time we will see 2 4 player games, 3 3 player games and 3 2 player games played and then the winner of the tournament will be decided. So now it's starting to get really really excited. I am very happy that I again managed to be part of this final of the world championship and now um, yeah, without further ado we are going to take a quick look at the opponents of uh, my group who made it into the finals. And uh, three opponents that I have to face in the finals are E5, Marta Pecheur and PV4. E5 is maybe the biggest surprise out of those names, um, because I think before the tournament he wasn't maybe that much known, so for, as far as I know hasn't won any major tournaments so far, uh, no, but he made it so far in the finals, um, had some very nice results, and of course those of you who follow my channel have already seen some games of him, because I actually already encountered him in stage 5 of the tournament, where he managed to finish before me in the group and sent me to the lower brackets, so now I have the chance to maybe make things right again and try to finish before him again. And now let's take a quick look at uh, how his uh, progression in the tournament went so far. All of my opponents in this group didn't have to play in stage 1, all were qualified. E4 then played in stage 2, finished with 29 points, won his group in stage 3, again finished with 29 points and also sent MBB Chess to the lower bracket who also then made it to the semi-finals so had encountered already quite a strong opponent there in stage 4, finished with 33 points, then, then stage 5 that was the stage where I played against him. He again won the group, finished with 27 points and with that made it to the last upper bracket group where he had a chance to qualify him directly uh, to the finals. But in this group it was a bit difficult for him. He finished at the fourth position with eight, with eight and a half points, so that didn't go ideally for him. But then in the semi-finals when he was sent to the lower bracket he again showed that he... Uh, yeah, is quite a strong player, finished with 24 points, won his group, finished before Cengizip, who was maybe the fav favorite in this group, and then made it to the finals. Then the next opponent that we have here is Marta Pecheur, and of course, if you follow this channel, you probably have already seen quite a lot of games uh, with him. He played in the International Championship, in the Grandmaster Division, in the Mezzo Championship, we managed to win the Intermezzo Championship, I think, two times. And uh, yeah, also had, had quite a lot of success in the, a lot of other tournaments and also played in the finals already in the year before, so showing some very nice consistency. And we can also take a quick look at his, um, how he performed in the tournament so far. In the, first, in the second stage of the tournament, finished with 36 points and won his group. Then he made a tactical decision to go into the lower bracket very quickly and finished at the second position in stage 3, finishing behind Angor and with that went to the lower bracket where he then managed to win his group in stage 4 with 39 points, again managed to win his group in stage 5 with 33, then again managed to win his group with 28 points in stage 6. And then also in the semi-finals, of course, managed to win his group with 23 points. That was very close, but of course, at that point, um, yeah, they were just... I mean, we saw it in the last video where I took a quick look at all of the semi-finals group. All of those groups were extremely close, and they finished with 23 points before Pasclotopia and MPB Chess. And then as last opponent, we have PV4, who is in great form at the moment, and uh, uh, no, uh, he... Uh, no, plays in the Grandmaster Division now in International and Intermezzo, managed to no, stay in both of those Grandmaster Divisions now for quite a while, has also managed already to win an Intermezzo Championship title and also of course very importantly managed to win the Squid Game Tournament, so also has already some tournament wins in and uh, in the last months definitely is in quite a nice form and puts uh, pulls off some very nice results and in this tournament so far he in Stage 2 managed with to win his group with 34 points, then managed in stage 3 to win his group with 27 points, had already quite a strong opponent there, finished before Payada, the organizer of the tournament. In stage 4 won his group again with 32 points, in stage 5 won his group with 24 points, in stage 6 
which then was the last remaining upper bracket group. He had the chance to qualify directly to the finals and used it. Managed to win a very tough group with Watson, Yitz, Pascal, Topia on the E5 with 27 points. And with that was the one player that didn't have to play the semifinals because he was qualified for the finals directly. So he um, yeah, maybe has the strongest performance so far in the tournament because he is the only player who didn't finish uh, or who finished in every group at the first place. All other uh, players at least once didn't finish at the first place. So very strong performance by him so far in the tournament. And now yeah, with that we are now going to take a very quick look at the click rating and then we can start taking a look at the first game of the finals of the World Championship which will be a four player game so all of the players will be involved immediately. And the clicker rating I think didn't have an update since I've shown it the last time at the beginning of the semifinals. So I'm still in the first position. Mata Bescher is in the eighth position of the clicker rating. PV4 is at the eleventh position. And then E5, I think when I showed the rating of him when I played against him in the World Championship group, he was quite a bit far further down, probably those 60 places, but in the last uh, update of the rating he already made again a very big jump, is now in the 22, uh, 22nd position, and as we can see his estimated rating is a bit higher than the estimated rating of the players that are above him, so he is definitely expected to maybe make a jump again and move even further up in the rating. So now, those are the three players that made it to the finals, and yeah. Of course, uh, those are very strong players and also in, uh, have a very nice position in the rating. But now without further ado, we can take a look at the first game of the tournament where I of course hope to maybe score a win and have a nice start into the final eight games of this tournament. In this game I am playing the third position and first of all we can start taking a look at the leaders and wonders. And we can see that there are some lab leaders in H3 with Marie Green, Steve Jobs and Einstein, but there's no Bill Gates or Sid Meier. We have the space flight there, but no Manhattan Project. There's also Pierre, but no internet. Also no Hollywood. There are some culture or theater leaders with Fleming and Marlene Dietrich. And there's also Mandela, no Gandhi. And there is the Red Cross. In H2 we have maybe not the strongest wonders, especially if you have no colony game going, I think. Then maybe the strongest wonders are missing. The Suez Canal is of course there, who has a very high potential. And also James Cook, so there's definitely some colonization synergy in the game. We then have James Watt, we have uh, Nobel and Newton, the science leaders. We have Anthony Gaudi and Bach as culture leaders and one military action leader with Napoleon. We also have one military action leader in H1 with Jan Shishka. There's Cengiz Khan who can help with the strength. We have Michelangelo with some interesting H1 wonders, but no St. Peter's Basilica. We have Saladin, Isabella, Eleanor. Those last two can maybe help with the colonization game potentially. And then we have Gutenberg for some lab and printing press synergy. E5 is in the first position, there's only one leader or wonder available and he goes for Sun, so he's playing in first position, maybe as a chance to get a Colossus, and with that and maybe also no, the Suez Canal and Cook being in there, also Jan Shishka, that definitely could be a very nice pick. Mata Pescher then goes for Urban Growth and Richland, doesn't want to grab one of those leaders or wonders for two, instead just uh, takes those two cards, basically worth like... Uh, as much worth as an engineering genius, maybe even more flexible because you can now also start with building the lab first. And I think for me there are now some different decisions that all could make some sense. Of course I could just take the pyramids, have a re very solid wonder available and then I think I could have some decent chances to maybe at the next turn get Aristotle or Ashoka <coughs> because I think PV4 might go for Boudicca, could also go for the Colossus, but um, no, I think one of those three leaders uh, would is likely available for me at the next turn with E5 having gone for Sansu and I think Ashoka and Aristotle are both are working quite fine with the pyramids and so I think that would be a very solid start. But of course I can also take one of those cards uh, for one civil action cheaper and then maybe take a frugality together with it. I definitely could consider going for the Colossus here. I at least get the frugality together with it. There is a Suez Kennel and James Cook in the game and I am playing against Sansu. So I think the Colossus uh, yeah, definitely uh, would be a very valid choice here, here and I definitely consider to go for it. And then there's also Boudicca who I think is a very strong leader probably a leader that I would prefer over Aristotle and Ashoka, and there are still some other fine wonders come, that could come out of the deck. It was quite a close decision for me. I think all of those choices could be very valid, and at the end I 
made the decision to go for Boudicca and the Frugality. Uh, yeah. So I don't get the Colossus to help against Sansu, but the additional resource from Boudicca, and when I don't get them too early, could be quite helpful. And thanks to the Frugality, I maybe have a higher chance that I have enough population available to maybe use the additional resource from Boudicca multiple times. I have now a very strong leader plus a yellow card, and while I don't get the Pyramids, I was hoping that maybe I have a shot at getting Library or Rome Roads. And there are also some very interesting H1 wonders like Universitas or Silk Road that I could get early. And with that, at the end, Boudicca was my pick. But as said, I think the other choices could also be very valid, and now I don't know if I get a nice wonder for one civil action. Also, if PV4 should now take the pyramids, that could mean that E5 gets the Colossus, which synergizes even better, uh, which is quite nice for him with having Sansu. And um, yeah, so I think all of the choices could be valid, and at the end I just went with Boudicca. PV4 indeed goes for the pyramids. Now there's only the petrol system left for him for one civil action, which is maybe not ideal, but who knows against Sansu, who is also now playing with the Colossus, it could still prove to prove to be quite valuable. Then he will E5 will go for Sansu, build some mine, increase his population, will go for the Colossus. I think that makes a lot of sense. Can maybe now either go for an early strength push or colonization game, maybe even can do both. So um, yeah, with those draws. Uh, he can maybe have some interesting options. Matabesher has to decide what leader he wants to go for. He goes for Aristotle, builds the second lab, and then increases his population. Doesn't want to go for the Colosseum, and I think that makes sense with Rome Roads and Library coming down the row. And now it is my turn. I will go for Boudicca. I definitely want to build my third mine, so I those actions I definitely want to do. I don't want to miss out on the economical value of both of those actions. And then I don't think there's uh, any need of taking one of those wonders for two civil actions, because one of them will be guaranteed available for me at the next turn. The main decision is, do I want to take the Engineering Genius for two, or do I want to increase my population and then take one of those other cards for only one civil action? I could of course think about a Colosseum, just because I can maybe take it this turn a bit more easily, and I'm playing against Sansu Colossus. There are a Suez Cannon, James Cook in the game, so having the additional military action, additional draws could be quite valuable, so I think I definitely at least considered it, but I just like it to have more to have an economical wonder, so at the end I didn't like to go for this. If I don't take the Engineering Genius, then of course it means that PV4 can take it for one civil action, and especially with having the Pyramids, I think that could be quite strong for him. But I think, um, first of all, it's a four-player game, so that shouldn't be too much of a concern for me. And even if I take it, he can go for a Shoka, maybe elect him, take the Iron for two, that would then fall down to two if I take the Engineering Genius, and then I get the additional resource production from there, maybe can even build a mine directly later at some point, so I think that could also be a very solid start for him, and I don't think I have to be take this too much into consideration, and with not... Uh, no. And at the end I then actually made a decision to just increase my population and take a rich land, so no. I think the rich land gives only one resource less than the engineering genius, so I, um, paying an additional civil action for the engineering genius um, I think is not really better for myself, but of course with the rich land there's the problem that I don't know for certain how I can use it with the engineering genius, I know I can maybe use it for Rome roads or library, but not having increased my population would also leave me vulnerable to not maybe missing out on development of religion or warfare, and so at the end I you know, took the rich land instead, could have maybe also taken cultural heritage or the Colosseum, but at the end I went for this. This means that the iron stays in three, meaning that maybe e5 will be the player to get it, which is maybe not too bad, um, because he doesn't have any additional science, can't go for it that easily, and maybe it will also make it a bit harder for him to also go for a very successful early military push. So maybe the iron is not as strong for him as maybe for the other players. On the other hand, the other players also... I mean, PV4 also doesn't have any additional science production, probably would be best for Mata Pesher. Um, but, yeah, at the end that was my choice, and with that, uh, PV4 will have the chance to grab the Engineering Genius, but doesn't get the Iron for two civil actions. He has now to decide whether he wants to go for Ashoka or for a Mare, I think both leaders could be valid choices, and he makes the decision to go for Ashoka, and, uh, yeah, then at the next turn can maybe elect him, start taking some cards, and then very soon finish the Pyramids. 
E5 will start continue with building the second lab, increases his population, just grabs the iron for two civil actions, I think very fine for him. He didn't push interestingly, maybe didn't draw an event that he wants to see it, but he is revealing a tactic already, maybe he still wants to keep those other cards in hand, maybe those could be some colonization cards or other tactics that he wants to keep. Mota Bashir seeds in the development of crafts is revealed. Here first, maybe you could say now it's interesting to see what wonder he will go for, but as we will see, he actually doesn't go for any wonder. Instead, he really wants to make sure that he has an additional civil action. With Aristotle, gets the additional science, can go for the fifth civil action at the next turn. And as I said, there are some interesting H1 wonders, so it's a bit of a gamble. He doesn't know for certain yet if he finds something nice to invest into, but especially with those nice wonders, it's definitely a gamble that can pay off, and yeah, I think it could turn out to be a nice decision. But of course, he could also just take one of those solid wonders, so I think that would also be a solid choice. But with having Aristotle, of course, uh, he can maybe really start to produce a lot of value if you get uh, some additional civil actions early, and if there's no universe, it has a Silk Road revealed quick quickly, or maybe Maybe he just gets the chance to get into iron or alchemy, he finds something to invest into and maybe is not, um, won't miss it too badly to have one of those wonders, but still an interesting choice, but one that definitely could, could be worth it. Now I have the decision um, to which one I want to go for and I think it's a close one, I think those wonders are relatively equal in power level, especially in 4-player games, maybe in 4-player games I would even slightly prefer the Rome roads. But uh, I think those are relatively equal for me, and uh, at the end I just thought the library it works more smoothly for me. I can take the additional resource from Budika, and now I can just take and finish it. If I take the Rome Roads, I can't take the Rome Roads and finish it. Of course, I could still get the additional science production that I now get from the library with just building my second lab. And then I could maybe take the Rome Roads, build some steps off the Rome Roads, but then I don't have a free population. Or I could take the Rome Roads, build a lab, increase my population, but then I go into consumption more early. And just because of that, that was already reason enough to go for the library, because now I can get the additional value from my wonder immediately. I don't go into consumption and I still have a free population. And with those wonders being relatively equal for me, that was already reason enough to go for the library. Then I will draw two cards, the colonization card and the foray. PV4 will start building on the pyramids. He um, got some additional resources as the others from the development of crafts and now can finish the pyramids, will elect a shoka and with taking the drama will already produce an additional resource with a shoka. Then E5 seats opens the development of markets and takes some additional resource from there, will finish the Colossus immediately, is now at 4 strength, so uh, I was, I'm, I'm quite happy that I have already a colonization card, otherwise I might have to consider maybe already building a warrior, or at least it would be a, ris a little bit risky to not do so, and uh, then E5 will take the urban growth and the cultural heritage. Mata Bashir doesn't find anything nice to invest uh, his resources into yet. Could have taken the alchemy, but it would have been difficult to get out of corruption. Instead, he just goes for the Code of Laws, grabs the masonry, and then to get out of corruption, builds an additional farm, meaning that at the next turn he can guarantee increase his population again, and then until the end of H1 it probably will produce him an additional population. Maybe there's also still the chance he will go for Jan Shishka, so I think that's a creative a solution, building this, just building this third farm. Um, but, I mean, probably also doesn't want to build a warrior, so yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, but uh, still play that you maybe could relatively easily miss out on, so nice that he spotted it. Then it's my turn again, I made a decision to not push the foray, I don't have any tactic, don't have any military technology, I won't take the swordsman for two civil actions this turn, especially now that E5 has revealed a phalanx tactic, I really might rather want to have the knights. And so I increased my pop, uh, I built a um, lab, I think I took science from Boudicca this turn, increased my population to get out of corruption, and then it was the question for me, um, how do I want to, what do, what, what do I want to do with those yellow cards, do I maybe even want to take two of them, do I want to increase my population once and take one of them, I actually took the food from the development of markets, because I think if this game will turn out to be military heavy, having as much population as possible could be quite nice, and now I have just enough to get two more population until my next turn. And I think I have to increase my population another time here. Of course, there are some nice yellow cards to get for one civil action, like I could take Richland and Breakthrough. 
but uh, then I um, yeah, just can't easily go into something like iron or alchemy if it is available. Maybe I want to be able to <clears throat> grab something like knights for two or maybe even three civil actions if stuff uh, starts to get dangerous. <clears throat> so yeah, I think for the flexibility for the next turn I really should increase my population here. And then I can take only one of those yellow cards and it was a really close decision for me whether I want to take the breakthrough or the rich land. I think for me, maybe the rich land could be the slightly better card because I have the additional science production from the library. Boudicca can also score me additional science. On the other hand, I have already this rich land A and also if Boudicca gives me some additional resource for the military at some point, which definitely might happen, then um, no, she also will give me some additional resources. So I think it's relatively close for me. I thought that maybe it could be not could not be a bad choice to consider going for the warfare at the next turn if it should be available for me and then investing into a blue tech could be a lot more affordable if I maybe have the breakthrough available and also if we take a look at PV4 again um, considering how those actions affects the player after me in four player game is not that relevant but it still can maybe tip uh, the decision into the one or the other direction especially if it is a relatively close one like this and I think for PV4 with having delayed the lab a little bit with not having any wand or leader that produces additional signs it would be quite nice for him to get a breakthrough. You might now get the alchemy very likely so he will probably build up some science production but even then I think the breakthrough would still be a very nice card to get from one civil action and yeah, with me maybe planning to go for the warfare and um, the science kind of always being usable very nicely because getting into government for military tech, iron upgrades or whatever I want to do just takes a lot of science. So at the end I went for the breakthrough but also the rich land I think would be a very valid choice. Then I draw uh, the Legion tactic, which could be nice to have in case I miss out on the Knights. BB4 will increase his population two times, takes the Alchemy, takes Eleanor, has now the full Ashoka bonus with that can increase his population again at the next turn and he doesn't want to build a second lab yet, instead wants to save a civil action at the next turn when he then can build it directly, but now he still has to find a way to get out of corruption and he will do it with building a warrior, meaning that at my next turn I uh, uh, need or I will have to take the additional resources for the military with Boudicca and I think going for Eleanor definitely makes a lot of sense. He can now keep a Shogov until the end of H1 and then use Eleanor as a very nice transitional leader. E5 seeds, the development of politics uh, is revealed, so even uh, more cards are drawn by all players. I have now a lot of events in hand that I can potentially seed. E5, this turn has finally enough science to go for the iron, will uh, start developing it, upgrades one time, and then is willing to take the knights for two, uh, indicating that he indeed really wants to go for the phalanx tactic, otherwise he could have taken the swordsman for one if he maybe wants to upgrade fighting band or legion, so that is definitely an indicator that he will very likely plan on upgrading the phalanx tactic. Then Matapesheur will see it, opens the development of religion. He takes the iron for two civil actions. He still needs to find something to invest his resource into. Maybe uh, got a little bit unlucky with no early H1 wonders being available. That is of course always the risk if you skip the HA wonder, but now he can take the a copy of iron. That however makes it a bit more tricky for him to go for a copy of knights. And so in, instead of going for the knights, he will actually go for swordsman and the rich land. And then with building a warrior will get out of corruption, but thanks to the rich land can still potentially go for three iron upgrades at the next turn. And while it is maybe a bit of a disadvantage to not go for the knights, he has now revealed a heavy cavalry tactic, meaning that Genghis Khan could turn out to be a very interesting leader for him. And he might also get a great wall at the next turn, because uh, no, um, that uh, he can take relatively easily, and also with having swordsmen and... Uh, and maybe going for a lot of infantry units could be a very, very nice help for him to not fall behind the military. This turn I will go for the knights. Um, I was very happy to see that the knights will fall down to one civil action for me, so hopefully I will be able to copy the phalanx tactic at some point when it will be upgraded. There is also Jan Shushka available, meaning that e5 very likely will have the chance to get him. Um, uh, no, because uh, no, and for me it definitely um, 
taking for three, I think, is definitely too costly here. And instead, I have to find other ways to make sure that they can get enough military strength. I will take the knights. I will also take the warfare. I just think now that it is relatively clear that e5 will get Yamshishka, I have to be very careful, and the additional military action will be quite nice. The monarchies could still be there to get an additional military actions, but those are relatively late by now, and the warfare allows me to get a military action, and then maybe still just being able to wait for an h2 government form. There were a lot of different lines that I considered for this turn that maybe uh, are not that much different because my first instinct was of course to develop the knights, build one knight um, and then I with my last civil action can increase my population, that could be a very solid turn. But maybe it's actually not really necessary to develop the knights already. I could for example also build a warrior, develop the warfare and increase my population, go for the knights later on. Or I could even say that I just build a warrior, increase my population, get out of corruption thanks to the library. I can take one more card and then I could consider taking maybe the uh, happy face solution because there could be one small issue. If I increase my population now one more time, then if I want to build two units, military units at some point to copy the phalanx tactic and if there's no development revealed that gives additional population or food, then it could actually be that I might potentially get some issues to get another population out, meaning I could face some happy face issues, and then the theology could be potentially important to have to just upgrade this religion. It's the last copy of theology, the Great Wall will likely be gone, and then there's not really any way to generate additional happy faces, so I maybe have to consider going for this, but there's always the chance that I can take a food from Boudicca. Of course, maybe I always have to take the military resources, and there could be development, so at the end I wasn't willing to take uh, the theology, especially with Pierre in there, it would also feel a little bit bad to go for the theology. And at the end, I actually went for just going the knights for my original instinct, because if I now, for example, develop the warfare, make sure that they get one more draw and build a warrior, then it is a little bit annoying if the development of warfare is revealed. I can't really take it that nicely, because I probably want to put my third military unit into the knights, and um, I might not have enough population to build a third warrior and another knight, and with that I think it just makes the most sense to go for this knight, build one, increase my population, with that I'm prepared for the free warrior. There is the small chance that maybe I could get some happy face issues and can't really easily put this worker into the military without having an uprising, but I think there are a lot of ways how I can fix it, either with taking a food from Boudicca, maybe with getting a copy of reserves, or just with getting help from the developments. I keep two events in the colonization card and will draw the Dark Ages. PV4 will now go for the alchemy, builds one directly, takes the warfare also in hand for him to have an additional military action that might be especially nice for him with Eleanor. Also, again, now he's even more colors in hand, is very flexible, the next turn can maybe also use some of those cards and still have to have the full Ashoka bonus, and then he will go for the Great Wall, meaning that Matabashir won't have the chance to go for it, and instead PV4 has now this wand available that maybe will help him with the strength. E5 offers the open borders agreement to me. I will accept it, but I have to be a bit careful because he will very likely now go for Jan Shishka. And then, of course, I have to be a bit careful, but I also have always the chance to cancel it at my turn. And so at the end, I accepted it. And I was hoping that with the warfare and with being able to copy the tactic at some point, I hopefully won't be in a big trouble because of having accepted this pact. E5, thanks to having taken the cultural heritage, has just enough science to, even after having gone for the iron, now also being able to go for knights. He will go for Jan Shishka, elects him, the phalanx tactic is now upgraded, he will increase his population, builds one knight and is now at nine strength, so it's definitely um, a bit threatening, and the other players have now to see if they can react, if they want to react, or if they maybe have to let uh, leave themselves vulnerable. And for Matabe Scher, it's not that easy. He could, of course, go for Swordsman, but he doesn't have a free population at the moment. He has maybe no uh, infantry tactic. Cengiz Khan is coming down the row. He might be able to go, go, go for him at the next turn, but um, he doesn't have him available for now. And so he makes the decision to just fully upgrade the iron, go for um, this economical play, but he might be punished by an aggression. But those H1 aggressions are maybe not that bad. I think maybe losing a population with the enslaved could be bad, but if he gets some resources stolen, maybe it's not too bad, of course. But yeah, if he somehow maybe also lose some food from a blunder and can't increase his population, that could also be a bit bad. So of course it's not ideal, but I think if he doesn't have any way, then of course there's no sense in increasing his strength. I mean, he could have maybe built one swordsman, upgrade one, but there's still the danger that an aggression might be played against him. Not going for those iron upgrades just would cost him a lot of value, so I think that makes a lot of sense. 
this turn I see the foray into the deck which is a little bit of a risky seed and I first didn't really thought uh, that I might want to do it because e5 is already at 9 strength maybe has the chance to build another unit at some point depending on the developments and what else you will go for could then maybe go up to 11 strength or something if he builds another knight so um, he can go for a very solid amount of strength and Matapashur will very likely go for Genghis Khan if he goes for swordsman builds one at some point upgrades those two he will be at 10 strength so I basically have to find a way to get more strength and if I just go for the warfare one warrior and copy the tactic I will be at 9 strength which is not enough but I was already looking at this copy of Swordsman that is coming down the row and I thought I might want to go for that at the um, next turn because otherwise there is the chance that I might stay the weakest depending on how much strength PV4 can muster. The next turn is probably not the weakest very quickly but uh, if PV4 at some point has finished the Great Wall, has the Warfare then uh, I might be in danger and I might need the Swordsman to not just suffer potentially through a lot of strength events. And I thought that the chance that I get the Swordsman is relatively high. PV4, it would be very costly for him to take it for 3. E5 doesn't really need it, and Matabeshur has already a copy, so I maybe can go for a copy of Swordsman at the next turn. If I then have two Swordsmen, one Knight, the Tactic, and the Warfare, I will be at 11 strength. And with that, I was hoping that maybe if a chance that I win the foray, because Matabeshur at the moment doesn't look like he can easily go for more than. Um, three units into the military so he might stay at 10 and for pv4 it also takes a bit of an investment until he can go for more but depending on how quickly the event deck will move it definitely can backfire e5 might now go for an aggression so i'm not sure if it is the right thing to do but uh, with me planning to go for swordsman at the next turn i was willing to see the foray now into the deck and then the event revealed is the development of agriculture, making it sure that I have an additional population available at the next turn. I took the science from Boudica. I will go for the warfare because I, uh, no, I will actually not build a unit this turn because I want to leave myself open for the development of warfare and I won't increase my population this turn. And then I uh, need the warfare to at least threaten to defend against an aggression. I can't defend, so that's of course a bit risky, but the thing is Matabashir certainly can't defend with that if E5 wants to go for an aggression. I think he definitely should go against Matabashir unless he has knowledge about a lot of defense cards and with that I think I can allow myself the luxury of staying relatively low in strength and hopefully not getting punished for it. So I developed a warfare and then one idea could be to just take the alchemy, develop it and go for an upgrade. There's of course a copy of iron in the row but I have not enough science to go for it, also not really enough actions and I think it might just be too costly. It is the last copy so if I don't go for it now I will miss out on it but we saw that they are not really the most interesting H2 wonders and there is James Watt so I think it's maybe not a bad game to just go for coal and then now use the opportunity to get even more science production going. Of course it sadly means that likely the rich land won't be used so it at the end didn't really turn out to be that nice of a card for me but uh, no, still even with that I think the alchemy is the better choice and I could now just go for one upgrade. However um, while that could be a very nice play I also have to consider what leader I want to go for. Now there's Isabella and Michelangelo in the row. Michelangelo maybe I don't really want to go for because I will stay on bronze mines and maybe don't necessarily want to go for one of those H1 wonders especially because the Universitas I thought will likely be taken. Machu Picchu I don't really need and uh, no. So I mainly thought about Isabella here and she might even help me to potentially win some colonies for the Zeus Kennel. If I go for Isabella, I probably would keep her in hand for now, also take the alchemy to have something to upgrade and then increase my population. The problem then would be that at the next turn, when I very likely will get the two additional resources from Boudica, which are the reason why I would keep Isabella in hand, then I'm missing one science to go for both alchemy and the swordsman and also civil action wise it's actually not that easy to um, go for swordsman and then also for the alchemy. I could of course hope for some developments, there would be some that would allow me that, but if I can't go for the alchemy at the next turn as well, I'm just missing out on a lot of science. On the other hand, if I don't go for Isabella now, I might likely lose Boudica. And then the one leader that is left is Saladin, who maybe is a bit stronger than Isabella, but if I don't get a civil action back when replacing my leader, that's already one civil action that I lose that Saladin has to make up to. But one benefit of Saladin is of course also that in age 2 that, he, that I then have more civil actions, which can be quite nice. So um, um, then the civil actions might be more valuable. Um, 
and with uh, me maybe miss, uh, missing out on potentially two or three even more signs uh, with, if I go for Isabella now I at the end made a decision to just go for the alchemy upgrade but uh, it could uh, especially if Saladin maybe stays awkwardly here on two civil actions could backfire a little bit um, but I uh, at the end was willing to let Isabella go. I draw one colonization card also another heavy cavalry tactic and a raid PV4 seats and opens the development of planning. The options for that are development of science, settlement, civil lives. No free warrior, but uh, definitely some interesting development. Science, uh, settlement, uh, and of course civil life as well could also all, all be uh, very nice uh, options. PV4 this turn will go for the warfare. Maybe took the additional science from the development of planning. Yes, they placed the patriotism. Um, I was a little bit afraid because... I only stayed in f uh, it fell for strength, of course, seeded a fray into the deck, but I thought that PV4 doesn't have an easy way to go for more than four strength. But now, with the two signs from the development of science, he has the option to go for the warfare, and with that, can potentially now build an additional warrior, be prepared for the fray. But he actually makes the decision against it. The reason for that likely being that maybe he maybe just doesn't have any uh, infantry tactic available, otherwise, maybe he would have revealed one by now. Or, uh, and also, if he uh, still gets the last copy of Knights, he probably rather wants to go for the upgraded Phalanx tactic instead of maybe just a Fighting Band or Legion tactic, but probably he doesn't have any tactic, and with that stays only at four strength. Then e5 will go for an aggression, a plunder will steal three food from Artapesher, thanks to the development of agriculture, at least he has still just enough to still increase his population, which could make things a little bit nicer for him. But of course still not ideal for him to get hit by an aggression, but it had to be expected after e5 having a lot of draws. Um, Atapesho at least managed to get all of his iron production up and maybe now will have the chance to go for Genghis Khan. e5 lets Genghis Khan stay on two civil actions, a bit awkward, which is a bit awkward. Also interestingly, pv4 didn't take the iron at his last turn, meaning that he... Um, yeah, also misses out on it, meaning two players are competing for the call. The good news for me is that I'm playing right in front of him, so maybe my chances to get a copy early are a bit higher than for him. Matabishir will now go for Genghis Khan, develops the Swordsman, builds one, upgrades one, is now at 9 strength, and then will go for the Universitas at the next turn, can maybe finish it immediately. But my might also have some uprising issues, can maybe disband his third farm potentially. This turn I will go for the Swordsman, um, the not building a warrior or any unit at the turn before, not only at the reason because of the development of Warfare, but now I can also build a Swordsman directly using the additional resource from Boudicca. I will develop the Swordsman, build one, copy the Phalanx tactic, and I will also go for one lab upgrade and increasing my population. I don't have knowledge about Pestilence and Rats, so I think increasing my population is mandatory, and then doing this upgrade I think is also better than taking any of those cards. Now I could also go for even one more upgrade, but I'm the strongest already anyway. And um, yeah. I could potentially get punished if e5 maybe at his turn increases his population and then afterwards there's a strength event revealed where it matters to be the strongest. But I don't have knowledge about such an event for the foray. Hopefully it will be enough to stay 10 strength. Matapesher can only easily go for one more strength and um, then I made a decision to not upgrade this warrior because I have four military actions and that the next turn I can do it without missing out on a draw. Of course it's only an H1 draw that I miss out on now, but the thing is I have two events in hand um, that are maybe not that ideal for me to push because the Dark Ages I don't really want to play with having that much science production, still waiting for a government form, the immigration maybe I can prepare for but it's also not that ideal and now with one draw I at least have the chance to get another event and maybe get something that I can more easily see it because the next turn if I'm one of the two strongest I really might want to push to get a foray out before maybe the other players then find a way to uh, get even stronger than me. So I wanted to get this one draw. Sadly, it's no event, so if I want to push it the next turn, it has to be a decision between those two. PV4 will this turn go for Eleanor. It's the last uh, turn where he can get a civil action back. Will then play the reserves for the resources and then just finishes the Great Wall. It's now at 7 strength, probably not uh, in danger of, or definitely not in danger of an aggression, but stays the weakest for now. The last copy of Knights isn't in the row yet, but in the next turn he kept could maybe go for it, copy the phalanx tactic, and then he would be at quite a nice amount of strength. E5 seeds, the barbarians are revealed, he has the most culture, but sadly it's just not uh, around, uh, uh, around the uh, 
one of the two weakest. He will then go for the Code of Laws. Builds one more knight, is now the strongest, so if now something like Uncertain Borders or Border Conflict is revealed, even though I think I had knowledge about Border Conflict, um, then I could maybe be a bit unhappy about not having upgraded this last warrior the turn before. E5 will go for the Mitri Castle, making it even easier for him to maybe um, uh, get a bit more strength going. Marta Pecheur will go for the Masonry, finishes the Universal Test, is now at 4 Science Production, takes the breakthrough and increases his population, but he still has an uprising issue and so he makes the decision to destroy this farm. Not ideal for him, um, but maybe um, it's still somewhat fine and he has no strong resource and decent science production going. Uh, is uh, missing out on Genghis Khan culture uh, with not being able to go for this upgrade, but I think it should definitely be worth it to finish the Universal Test one turn earlier. Now it is my turn and this turn I had to think about, do I want to see, do I want to push an event that um, is maybe a bit unfavorable, um, at least maybe I can prepare for both of them a bit, but um, it might be that I will end up being unfavorable for me, uh, just in order to have a higher chance to get a foray out, and with PV4 having the chance to go for the knights the next turn, I thought it would be quite nice to get the foray now, and I made the decision to see it. There is also one event that would be when he uh, quite punishing for me, and that is the Pestilence, because if I lose the population I will have an uprising issue, but uh, that is only one event. The Rebellion would also be a bit annoying, I think I didn't have knowledge about it if I remembered correctly, um, so that would also be an annoying event, but when we take a look at the opponents, most of them have some unhappy workers, so I was hoping that there is no Rebellion in the deck, and at the end I made a decision to push was hoping for the ray, but for ray, but uh, sadly, as you can see, there is actually the pestilence revealed, and that makes my turn now quite a bit awkward. Because before, I just thought about taking electing Saladin, upgrading this warrior, uh, getting out of corruption, and taking rich land engineering genius. But now, after losing one population, I actually will have an uprising issue. I will have to delete something to fix that, otherwise, there is no other option. Uh, so that that is definitely a bit problematic, and no, uh, that definitely uh, makes my turn a bit, quite a bit weaker. So maybe I shouldn't have seeded, but I think uh, no, I would probably still seed because it would be quite nice to get a fray out and. Uh, no, the Pestilence and maybe the Rebellion, but that would also hurt a lot of other players. The Pestilence, of course, now as well, but sadly for Marta Pecheur it won't co cause uprising issues. For E5 it will actually cause uprising issues, but he has maybe something that he can delete that doesn't hurt him as much. He can just delete the warrior, still keep one tactic, has to lose a civil action, can finish the Michi Castle, and then is even at 12 strength. So it's not that bad for him, and PV4 also doesn't get any uprising issue, can increase his population again, still is a free population for the knights. So no, I was quite afraid that this pestilence might set me back a little bit, because now I have to go for Saladin, I can still take one card, I can get out of corruption with upgrading, but I have to make a decision, what do I want to destroy? It's basically a decision between mine or farm, because I definitely don't want to lose a lot of strength um, with uh, the spending unit or something. Um, so I, uh, at the end, made the decision to destroy the farm at uh, the mine. I could destroy the farm, but then I uh, could get into troubles with famine soon. And uh, so at the end, I went for the mine, but it's definitely quite painful because it also cost me a civil action, meaning instead of being able to take both of those yellow cards, I only can take one now. And I made the decision to go for the rich land because especially with being on lower resource production now, it will be very important to have some help getting into coal mines. And while the engineering genius gives more resources, the H2 wonders are not that interesting, so I don't know if I will even go for one at the end, especially with being on that low resource production. Now at the end of my turn, I again have an interesting decision to face. Do I want to use the strength from Saladin or not? Because the problem is PV4 at his turn will maybe or very likely go for a knight, copy the tactic, will get stronger, and then after his turn, I am not one of the two strongest any longer, meaning that uh, E5 might open the fray. Also at his turn, he will likely get stronger with finishing the Mitchie Castle. So I could take the strength from Saladin, increasing my chances that maybe I am part of the fray, but uh, no. I think especially with me being only in four civil action, it is somewhat costly to use sacrifice the civil action from Saladin. I just don't know if it will actually be worth it. Maybe PV4 with having Eleanor wants to see it anyway. Um, getting more draws and more cult from Eleanor would be a bit risky, but could could be a decision that 
could be justified and then the fray could be pushed out or maybe um, pv4 does get stronger but the fray is revealed yet maybe giving me the chance to take saladin's strength at the next turn i just don't know will that do anything for me taking the strength and a civil action now in h2 can be quite valuable uh, having on five civil action uh, would allow me to take a coal for three develop it and go for one upgrade and especially with pv4 also fighting with me over the coal that could be quite important to have the option to do if there's an interesting yellow card that they can take thanks to the additional civil action it already gives me quite some value for example it's not that likely that it will be the case because there's none on the row at the moment but if an efficient upgrade or something like this falls down to one and the one civil action makes the difference to take it's already three resources basically as much as i could have gotten from the fray so i really don't like it too much to use the strength from saladin when i don't know exactly what i will be getting but it's definitely um, um, in this position could be worth it and but at the end i rather took the civil action I do draw the defensive army tactics, that could be interesting if I get the cannons. PV4 will go for the knights, he doesn't see it, which probably makes sense as he will go from weakest to strongest this turn, so um, just the additional draws and culture is probably not worth it. Maybe you could play it greedily, but I think uh, it's probably safer to just go for the strength increase and not get the additional draws. Now e5 will see it, and sadly the fray is revealed immediately, so I do get punished for not taking the strength from Saladin, um, and sadly miss out on the fray, so um, no. Uh, that uh, definitely I uh, wasn't too happy about it. It would have been of course ideal for me if the order would be re reversed from the foray in the pestilence, but I mean when I seeded the foray I knew it was a bit of a risky play, it can backfire and so I got punished and that is something that I no, have to, uh, no, that, that definitely can happen. So uh, sadly that one wor didn't really work out nicely for me and with those l latest events I definitely uh, lost a little bit of confidence in my position at least for now because if i stay on two mines for longer it just cost me so much re resources and so i was hoping that maybe i can get either a government farm or coal going relatively quickly not to be sure this turn will go for the last upgrade to swordsman I still can't get any cash from Genghis khan but it's still very vital that he has the strength to not be in danger of an aggression also both of the copies of conmon are now talk taken away meaning i will go for the republic which is maybe fine because i have the warfare anyway this turn I don't see it, and as you can see I will go for the organized religion. It's not the most pleasant turn to play. I probably want to get out of corruption because losing resources is really costly with only being on two resource production. I could just take the selective breeding, go for an upgrade, and the next turn I would have one additional population available. But if I do this, I just miss one civil action to also take the cannons. And with having a tactic where I need the cannons, I think I really want to take the cannons. And at the end, I ended up going for the organized religion. Potentially even the Silk Road could still be interesting, but sadly building the first step is just not enough for me to get out of corruption. And so I think just going for the organized religion is quite nice. And at least it could mean that I might be better prepared for the immigration that I see that for now I now have the most happy faces. If Mata Bashir goes for a team spot soon, that might change. But maybe we'll also just do a revolution for now. And then maybe I at least could get an additional population out of the immigration. And now after having invested into the organized religion with that, making sure that I can get out of corruption. I made a decision to take the cannons, but one big downside, of course, with doing this play is that I'm not prepared to go for coal at the next turn. I would be missing one resource, but I don't know if coal will be available. Maybe coal and Republic will be available in case I probably would like to go for Republic first. And yeah, I need happy face at some point. It helps with the immigration. It helps against the potential rebellion, if I remember, if I remember it correctly, that I didn't have knowledge about it. And so I think at the end it's probably the best play. Again, I could take the strength from Saladin, but I think now that the foray is out, I am not the weakest. I think now it definitely makes sense to go for the civil action. I was happy that now I draw the Napoleonic army tactics, so at least I have a nice tactic available, which could be very useful. PV4 seats, the uncertain borders are revealed, but I won't lose yellow token and also wouldn't have gained one if I would have taken the strength so for that event it doesn't make any difference pv4 um, no, will get an additional yellow token Mata Bashir will lose one he will also take the second copy of cannons that makes of course a lot of sense with having the great wall he then takes the monarchy a relatively late monarchy but two copies of Conmon are gone and maybe he just wants to have the option to get into a government form relatively quickly and maybe also didn't have that many other options to take also interestingly takes a copy of journalism but um, there are some interesting one leaders in the game 
game and we also see uh, two of them revealed immediately Gaudi, Newton for both of them uh, the journalisms could be quite an interesting pick e5 seeds and now maybe I do get punished for not taking the strength I will lose two food or two resources um, so that's of course not ideal but uh, yeah, that could definitely be that the civil action from Saladin will at the end be worth more especially because for now I can just lose two food um, and uh, and those food I maybe don't need it that much at the moment so I can hopefully avoid losing resources Mata Bechur sadly will go for the team sports he kind of has to go for it now because he lost the yellow token to the uncertain borders and had to face an uprising issue so instead of going for revolution he will now go for the team sports which is on one hand bad for him because maybe he would have preferred to just do the revolution but on the other hand I was a little bit sad to see that sadly I probably won't get uh, the additional population out of the immigration that I've seeded in earlier and then interestingly Matabasher copies the phalanx tactic this turn from the heavy cavalry tactic not getting any strength from that for now but maybe being prepared to uh, make a lot easier on transition into the phalanx tactic still interesting because maybe his plan could be to do a revolution at the next turn then he could copy it at the next turn and maybe use one of the free military actions then that he has from the conmon so an interesting decision but it's of course not for certain that he will go for the conmon maybe he will first go for a scientific method if it is available and so he made a decision to just copy the tactic already now it is my turn, I am the weakest, I don't want to push. I definitely want to take the selective breeding because, I mean, Mata Bashir now interestingly invested into the irrigation, even though there was the selective breeding available for one, but he maybe just, you know, first of all, um, or maybe just uh, didn't want to pay the additional signs that he needs to get into the selective breeding. He could go for irrigation and then still have the potential to go for a revolution to Conmon or go for scientific method if those are available and that wouldn't be easily possible and so maybe just didn't find a civil action and just was fine with going for the irrigation i of course was happy now i have the chance to grab the selective breeding for one civil action i definitely could consider just going for um, yeah, um developing it going for one upgrading starting my food production but there are some issues first of all i don't have knowledge about reds so the food could be lost immediately and also it would mean that at the next turn I don't have enough resources to get into coal. So uh, that would be quite bad and with that I didn't want to go for the selective breeding this turn, didn't want to invest into it and instead I just built my third mine getting some additional resource production immediately. Of course if I get the coal soon maybe it could have been nice to build it directly but I don't know how soon I will be getting it. Now I get the additional resource production immediately and thanks, uh, or, and thanks to the one additional production I still have just enough resource to go for one coal upgrade at the next turn and with the last three civil actions I then took the wave because now I'm quite low on resources and to make me a bit safer and hopefully just being able to safely go for those coal upgrades um, with still having enough resource in the bank to threaten enough military I wanted to really get this wave and the six additional resources I think should be very helpful for me there are of course some interesting blue technologies that I could have taken just the system or architecture but if I want to go for cannon selective breeding coal and a government form then out of the sudden all of my science could still be occupied by that. Of course, architecture could be interesting, but I kind of wanted to do the other actions more. I could take, instead of the wave, maybe architecture and urban growth, but I have already built a lot of urban buildings, and who knows how many more I will build, probably some at some point, but uh, I also, at the moment, I'm not looking like I will go for an H2 wonder, so I didn't want to go for those blue tags because I might need my science elsewhere, and when I will go for the Republic, I have a lot of civil actions anyway and don't really need to trust the system. I will draw some cards, the terrorism, the immigration, and a war of technology, PV4 seeds, and there are indeed the reds, so I was happy that I didn't invest into the selective breeding. Those reds sadly um, yeah, don't have a lot to eat, only Mata Pesher is gifting them one food, and then PV4 this turn will go for the selective breeding. Then goes for Newton. Now when he elects Newton gets three civil actions back thanks to that is at a full civil action count. Then does a revolution thanks to Newton gets one civil action back and goes for one selective breeding upgrade. So I think that was a very very nice revolution turn basically getting you know, three additional civil actions this turn. 
uh, two more than usually when replacing the leader and also one back from Newton after doing the revolution. So yeah, it's not, uh, not that often that you can do such a nice trick with Eleanor and now even doing it together with Newton is quite nice. It's of course uh, maybe a relatively late Republic, but with doing those actions that efficiently, I think it's definitely worth it. And now he has a government form and can maybe concentrate himself to go for coal and maybe a military tech soon has the government form. So I think that makes a lot of sense and also is definitely a very stylish move. Then e5 seats and the knowledge of the ancients is revealed. As you can see, I again was not willing to take the strength from Saladin because some bad strength events were already out, like uh, Uncertain Borders, Foray, and I think I had knowledge about at least Border Conflict, the Raiders are out as well, and again, I just really wanted to be able to go for one coal upgrade, even if the coal is available for three, and with that value, the civil action from Saladin quite highly. And also, also, as you can see, there is now a coal coming down the row, so maybe at the next turn I can finally start increasing my resource production. E5 this turn will go for scientific method, will start upgrading his uh, science production takes the architecture that he can maybe use efficiently to finish the Zeus candle. Sadly, he didn't manage to build the upgrades um, on, with the reduced cost, but I think it just probably wasn't really possible. And this turn after he yeah, had maybe to delay it at a turn before, Marta Bashir will do his revolution to Conmon, and uh, with that, is now at a nice civil and military action count. But again, doesn't get a culture from, from Genghis Khan, which is a bit sad, but also not the most important, maybe. And this turn, I will get a bit of a boost because there's not only the coal, but also a copy of Republic available, which I was very happy about. I definitely will go for the Republic. And then I think I also, of course, want to grab the coal. Don't want to give the first copy to PV4, may, maybe letting him wait at least a little bit longer. And then I also just think it makes a lot of sense to go for a coal upgrade immediately because there are not that many other things that I can use my civil actions on. So I develop the coal, go for an upgrade. And one reason to keep the coal in hand is, of course, to maybe wait for James Watt, but I don't know when he will be available, so I think it still makes sense to go for the upgrade now, get the resources earlier, that already makes up for um, a little bit at least, at least uh, for the resource discount I would be getting. And now I have one civil action left, and also just to spend those civil actions already and be more flexible at the following turns. Now I have one civil action left, I could maybe consider to take Antony Gaudi, just to have a leader in hand already, but at the moment I don't have any additional population and still have a lot of other stuff to do. And there were two leaders that I were mainly looking to get, and that was either James Watt, I think, even though I went for coal already, he could still be nice to go for selective breeding and also for further coal upgrades, could still be a very nice transitional leader, or maybe Napoleon, because I have the Napoleonic army, have the cannons, and could maybe go for a bit of a military push if, uh, I, you know, if, I, if Napoleon is available for me. And so I didn't want to commit to entering Godin, I think then it makes a lot of sense to just go for the urban growth. Now at the end of my turn, I was struggling a little bit on what cards to keep, and I will make a decision on the discard that I will regret through I wrote uh, in uh, for the rest of the game basically, because it could have potentially at least given me some nice value. But no, I kind of would be nice to keep a lot of colonization cards because e5 went for the Suez Candle interestingly without having any colonies so uh, definitely uh, with him having seeded a bunch of those events would make sense if there are some colonies coming and maybe if I can win one of them relatively cheaply it could be very nice for me so um, I kind of would like to keep some colonization cards I definitely want to keep the tactic I and then all of the events could potentially be interesting depending on what depending on what leader I will get be getting and also the war could be interesting because as I said if I go for Napoleon maybe already at the next turn I could take Napoleon elect him play the wave get the additional resources develop the cannons maybe destroy one bronze mines build a cannon reveal the tactic I think that would put me at something like 22 strength or something in that direction if I don't remember if I remember it correctly six from Napoleon three from the cannons three from the tactic, so maybe even 23 if I'm not mixing up anything in my calculations. So that definitely would be an amount of strength that could be dangerous for some Mata Bashir at the moment doesn't have any additional population, could be punished a bit by it, and also be before if he maybe doesn't leave himself with a lot of resources saved up, could be punished quite a lot, and I kind of wanted to keep this war in hand to leave myself this option if there's maybe no James Watt but Napoleon on the row, I could go for a bit of a military-heavy approach, so I kind of wanted to keep the war. Then of course I could maybe even think to keep 
the politics of strength, but if I go for this, I will delay my food production. So long term, I don't really know how much strength I will be getting. So I think discarding this should be fine. And so I um, at the end made the decision to keep the war, the tactic, two colonization cards, and then only one of those two events. And as I kind of wanted to maybe at least have the option to push at some point, I made the decision to keep a relatively safe event, the immigration, because the terrorism, I will be too a culture ahead of Marta Pecheur, and Marta Pecheur at the moment doesn't have a nice way to get any additional culture production. However, it could be that if Nobel is taken away by E5, that maybe he makes the decision to go for Bach, even with not having any opera in hand. But he could also wait for Napoleon, um, even though there is the risk I will take him, so maybe he could end up going for Bach, could maybe get some additional cash from him and it could be nice to keep the terrorism in hand but if i'm in a situation where i kind of push an e where i want to push an event out of the deck then of course it could be bad if maybe the terrorism looks like it is very dangerous and might not be easily achievable and uh, now at the end i made the decision to keep the immigration discarded the terrorism but that is just such a card with such high potential and maybe i should have rather kept it because um yeah uh, I will actually end up having the least culture as it turns out, but yeah, I sadly at this point made the decision to discard it and will regret it a little bit because it could have been quite a poten uh, potentially strong event for me and maybe I should have kept it in hand, maybe just instead of this 1H1 colonization card. Of course there could be colonies coming, but only if this one would, would make a difference it's really worth it to keep it. Maybe of course to make one opponent pay a little bit more, but I think I should have kept a terrorism here and I will definitely regret this decision later on. I then draw another colonization card, so maybe I will indeed have the option to win a colony. PV4 offers the International Trade Agreement to E5, will get additional resource production from that, making up a little bit for his uh, missing resource production that he maybe will upgrade, be able to upgrade soon. He takes the Rifleman, which is an important card for him with having that many warriors, takes the rich land, develops the organized religion for free with Newton, but doesn't go for an upgrade, maybe just develops it to be a bit better prepared for the Dark Ages. I have I think I um, had the knowledge about it, so he probably doesn't have knowledge about it, and with that, um, yeah, it makes sense to be prepared for it. Then e5 sees the immigration is revealed. Sadly, this event at the end didn't turn out to be nice for me. e5 goes for the architecture, plays the SARS tactic, will maybe now go for a new leader, and indeed, after finishing the Suez Cannon, now of course, it is very interesting to see what colony he went for with going for the Suez Cannon with having no colonies yet. And the answer is he is going for the vast territory too. Then is going for Nobel, has no increased science production. Sadly for him, he is missing one tiny bit of science to develop the Conmon peacefully the next turn, which is maybe a bit annoying, but he is the strongest, has some really strong science production, very uh, decent resource production, and also quite a healthy yellow bank. So it's definitely not looking bad for him. And now he will get even more resources out of all of this. The new deposits are revealed. I at least gained five resources out of it with having been able to go for coal at the turn before. And now with Nobel being taken away and with Marta Bescher not being really able to use James Watt, he's indeed just going for Bach, has also seeded, so got some culture from there. So already after his turn, he is at 22 culture already. And with that, um, it definitely could start to get interesting to potentially having seeded a terrorism into the deck. But now I don't have this option. I am one of the two strongest. I mean, I know that the fray and the raiders are out. Maybe the call to arms could still be left, I think. So I see the immigration. But uh, yeah, if I would have had the terrorism in hand, I think by now with Marta Bescher having the bit of bigger production and with some events having been pushed, meaning that the next event deck is maybe revealed a bit quicker than I expected it, I would have kind of liked to have the terrorism. And that probably was a mistake, especially now, and of course about this event I didn't have knowledge, but now after the cultural influence is revealed, Marta Bescher again has gained two more culture against me. This turn I can go for James Watt, there's no Napoleon, so war wasn't really an option this turn. I mean, I could have still gone for it, but without a six strength from Napoleon, I think it's not really worth it to destroy a mine for that. And instead I will go for James Watt, replace Saladin, and actually I have taken the strength from Saladin at a turn before, because now I had a lot of civil actions with the Republic and made sure that I'm not the weakest, but I, in a sense, got punished for it, because now at the end of my turn we will see that an additional civil action could have produced me actually quite a lot of value. Um, but no, uh, with having that many, I at a turn before decided to take the strength. 
I uh, this turn will start with going for selective breeding because I think it will be important to me for me to now get additional population going, maybe allowing me to go for a cannon at the next turn for filling one Napoleonic army and maybe making it that I'm not the weakest. I will definitely also go for this one cheap upgrade. Um, I think having done this already is quite strong. And then I have now one civil action left. And now sadly I have to choose between those two yellow cards, efficient upgrade and reserves. Also, as we can see, at the turns before, taking the architect looked quite appealing, but now after all those investments and me still having to go for cannons, now out of the sudden the architecture doesn't really look like that nice of a card any longer. So I think it was the right decision to not take it early on and also don't want to take it now. But sadly, with having the strength, taking the strength from Saladin, I now have to decide which one of those cards I want to take from the, yeah, those two yellow cards instead of just being able to take both. The efficient upgrade is, of course, as the name uh, suggests, the more efficient card. But I thought that at this point, maybe it could be quite important to get additional food production because I will maybe get six additional resources from the wave. I will be able to upgrade my last mine relatively cheaply. And then I will have a lot of resources, but my population could... Be a little bit of a problem or not maybe not a problem but it could be nice to get them going a bit quicker i can increase my population at the next turn i will lose two yellow tokens before my next turn very likely and then i can get the next population out of the next turn another one in two turns but if i don't have the reserves i can't get one out in three turns and with the reserves i can even get another one out in three turns and also the second one that i will be getting will be an unhappy one so getting this third population that will be a happy one that i can put anywhere delayed could be quite bad and so i just wanted to have the option to take the food from the reserves and took it over the efficient upgrade I then draw some cards, the strategic territory and the historic territory. Um, I have some colonization cards, maybe I could see them, but with e5 having the Suez Canal, probably I rather want to hold off with them. PB4 seats and the Ravages of Time are rev is revealed, which is interesting because I think it's a bit bad for all of the players. PB4 will lose the pyramids, but he's now on five civil actions, which is a bit mitigated by Newton, but still um, definitely. Um, a bit limiting being on five civil actions at that stage of the game. E5 will lose the Colossus before he will get the H3 draws, which is a bit bad for him. Mata Pichel will lose the Universitas. He maybe gets hit the hardest by this. And I will lose the Library. Normally I wonder that's maybe not too bad to lose, but I think in this situation... I'm still a little, a little bit limited on science when I now go for the cannons and maybe want to go for some H3 text. I think the additional science could have still been quite nice for me and also the additional military card that they can hold on in hand could now be quite um could have been quite nice uh, still to have for the next turns because when i lose the uh, military action from the open borders agreement i can now only hold three cards in hand that's really not that much uh, if you maybe want to keep some impacts tactics colonization cards so um, i think all of the players it's for all of them it's not an ideal ravages um but maybe a mata Porsche probably gets hit the hardest by this PV4 will now go for the journalism. When he took the journalism earlier, I thought maybe it could be difficult to make use of it, but he went for the selective breeding and now has enough resources thanks to the new deposits to just build one, going up to eight resource production. And thanks to the organized religion and the efficient upgrades that he has, he can easily fix his uh, uprising issues that he might have at the next turn when the age will end. E5 seats opens the developed territory. I was willing to bid seven, just one unit on all of my colonization cards. Sadly, E5 is able to win it, even just for one unit. And thanks to the five additional science from the developed territory, he has now enough science to go for the constitutional monarchy, has now a second colony for the Suez Canal, even more yellow tokens, has now a lot of free population, can still go for the selective breeding if he wants to soon. And now just is building some knights, going up to 14 strength, still making sure to draw three cards, I think, taking the selective breeding, the rifleman, and also one copy of opera. Then H3 starts, and Marta Pecher will go for the cavalry man. Also goes for the scientific method, he lost some science from the Universitas, but he can at least get some science back, also has the revolutionary idea, so um, with that he can maybe make the loss of the Universitas at least not be that bad, with having now the additional science, I think he will also take the breakthrough, no actually the frugality, interesting, interesting decision, but of course having a lot of population will also be quite important in H3, he uh, allows him to get two more population out at the next turn, um, still an interesting decision, but yeah. 
population in H3 is important and it could definitely turn out to be important, especially because his next population is unhappy, so now he is guaranteed to get a happy population out at the next turn. Now it is my turn, I'm the weakest, I don't want to push. I will increase my population, that also gets me out of corruption already. And this turn I want to go for cannons and building one, but the question is how do I want to do it? I also definitely, definitely want to get this breakthrough, because after the, developing the cannons I am definitely somewhat low on science, and I think getting three additional science for one civil action is just too good of a, too good of a deal for me, and I don't want to miss out on it. Also, I was really eyeing this military theory because I have only the warfare now that I lost the um, library. It could really be nice to get some additional military actions going at some point. And all of the players could potentially like to go for the military theory. PV4 is also warfare, but it could be a nice upgrade still for him. E5 has a lot of science, could use it nicely. Mata Bichur doesn't have any uh, of those uh, techs, so... Um, now it could be nice, a nice card for all of the players, so if I don't take it now, it could be taken away by my opponents, and I might not get another chance to take one of those two mil copies of military theory. But if I want to take it for three, then it's a bit difficult, because I take it for three, I develop the cannons, and then I have only one civil action left, meaning I have to decide whether I want to play the wave or want to go for one coal upgrade. And it's a bit of a bad decision, because I have just enough resources to build a cannon and go for the upgrade without using the wave, but after using building the cannon and having revealed the tactic, I think I'm at 17 strength, and with that amount of strength it's definitely not clear if I will be able to use the wave nicely again. Maybe it will be the case, but I don't know it, and missing out on the upgrade also is definitely a bit of a value loss. So it felt a bit painful to grab the military theory, and the thing is, after developing the cannons, I'm 3 plus 4, so it will take two more turns until I can go for it, and then also it will maybe prevent me from going for some other stuff. So it definitely at some point will be a very useful card, but that will probably take a little while, and with that I thought it is just too costly to take it, and instead I went for the cannons, used the wave, and now I can use the wave and still go for one coal upgrade. And when I now um, uh, I'm in the danger of missing out on the military theory, I think I definitely want to have one patriotism, want to have one additional military action there. And with my last um, civil action, I know played the reserves for food already, so that in uh, two turns I will be able to get a happy population out. And the other thing, I, mean, I just didn't have any other nice option to use the last civil action. I will draw one card and opt intervention. Now I'm the strongest, so I was of course hoping for a potential strength event, but there is another colony coming, and E5 again is able to win it. This time at least he has to send an army, but now he has already three colonies for his Suez Canal, so his Suez Canal play, which seemed interesting at first, is now definitely starting to pay off quite nicely. PV4 needs to fix his uprising issues, upgrades one religion to organized religion, and then goes for a coal and goes for an upgrade. Is now at six resource production. Definitely starts to have quite a nice economy. His downside is maybe may be that he is still on only five civil actions, but at least he has Newton, and with his nice science production, he might be able to upgrade his science relatively soon. Now, there is interestingly a war declared. If I have just sent two knights away for the colony, but still is able to go for this war, there is um, probably the copy of military theory will be involved, and uh, the target is Mata Pesher, so he will go for the military theory, develops it, increases population two times, and then just builds a lot of knights, is willing to miss out on some draws in order to go for this war, then just goes for Einstein, can maybe replace Nobel, and then potentially score some Nobel Prizes in H3, has a nice leader now in hand already. And could maybe also be an indicator that there could be an Iconoclasm coming. He has seeded two, um, no, probably even, ah, I seeded one of those events, the immigration, and then he has seeded two. And um, with him grabbing the uh, Einstein, even though there were some other nice cards available, it could be an indicator that he um, maybe seeded the Iconoclasm, but it could also be that he just wants to have Einstein as a nice leader that he can go for at any point. Mata Bechera has to now see how he can react to the war. Now we can see that maybe the frugality could have been quite important to have, having the ability to go for an additional population. Thanks to the prosperity, he now would have had the available food anyway. So now it's not that important any longer, but we see how important it could have been and still maybe will be. I mean, he gets later on in a population out more quickly. We'll go for Mandela, replacing Bach. Mandela is definitely a very nice upgrade. Now he has an additional civil action to the additional culture production and thanks to building the team spots has even more 
culture production and having had with Bach. I also really would have liked to go for Mandela, so sadly he also is taking this lead away from me because James Watt has done his job and I would like to get a very quick replacement. And with Mandela being taken away, there are actually not that many leaders in the game that I'm nicely prepared for at the moment. Mata Bechera manages to go up to 18 strength, but it still means that he will lose a lot of signs, which is quite bad for him. Then I this turn won't push. I don't want to push a tender territory into the deck. Instead, I will take definitely one copy of Patriotism, because maybe if you noticed that both copies of Military Theory were taken away, meaning unless I go for something like Fundamentalism or Communism, I will be stuck on three military actions, and then those Patriotisms, I think, will turn out to be quite valuable for me. Again, there are some cards that I really would like to have. Also, we have to maybe think about what leader I want to go for. Uh, Pierre is maybe not idea that ideal with having organized religions, so I could grab Rose Bots, but I don't really need it as a happy face solution. For Fleming and Marlene Dietrich, I don't have anything yet. Steve Jobs, I probably would need computers to make him very nice. Marie Curie could be a fine leader, so sh uh, she is maybe the leader that I could get without needing any more setup and still have, a, have her as a solid leader. And because of that, I kind of would have liked it to take the movies this turn to at least also be prepared for Marlene Dietrich and Fleming. Maybe if the other players don't push a lot more in the military, it could be that I can maybe invest into one movie and if one of those leaders in the row go for a new leader and uh, maybe just start a little bit of cultural production. But uh, yeah, I kinda, there, are kinda, there are some actions that I want to do. First of all, I will increase my population and one... Um, I kind of wanted to use the patriotism and build one more cannon, for which I need to increase my population one more time, and I want to build organized religion so that I don't get hit by the immigration. But I thought about not building the cannon, just building the organized religion, which would give me the necessary actions to easily take the reserves, the movies, and then maybe also something like urban growth or endowment, which all could be very interesting cards for me. But the problem is if I don't build the cannons, first of all it could be that PV4 at his turn will get stronger than me, then I am in danger of getting hit by some strength events while being the weakest. And also E5 could potentially play an aggression against me. I would be able to defend, but he has this one warrior that he doesn't really need, has a lot of military action, so if he doesn't have anything to do with his politics action, maybe he could just make the decision to go for an aggression, maybe he could make the decision to sacrifice a warrior. So I at the end just thought it's too important for me to build one more military unit to not be the weakest and to be safe from an aggression. And so I built this religion, increased my population. I could now build a cannon without using the patriotism, but I really wanted to start getting some draws in. I could not use the patriotism, maybe take the movies and the reserves, but if the game stays peaceful, who knows, or if I can maybe use the patriotism still very nicely. Um, but that could maybe be an idea, but then I would miss out on a draw, which I didn't really like that much, and at the end I made a decision to play the patriotism, build one cannon, take the reserves, missing out on the movies, which takes me maybe some options away from me for the leaders, but on the other hand I really don't have that much science if I invest into the movies, it might leave myself quite vulnerable, so it would only really be an option if I maybe get a copy of Revolutionary Idea together with it at the next turn, or if maybe the other players are really looking like they don't really have any intentions to go for a lot of military. I will end my turn, keep the colony and two colonization cards, will draw another colonization card, maybe I will be able to win a colony and also the impact of balance could at least be a seedable impact if I get a bit more culture production and science production at some point. But for now it isn't really that great for me. PV4 will go for one cannon, upgrades the second mine to coal and then increases his population, stays the weakest for now. Um, then E5 will steal eight signs from a tapisher, has now a lot of signs available opens the wealthy territory, which I was not willing to bid that much on because I actually um, have a lot of resource already and not the most population, so I think it would not be that great for me to win it, but at least still bid um, one unit into H2 colonization cards at the end PV4 is able to win it and he gets it for only one warrior, which is not ideal for me because now he gets a big resource boost and maybe he doesn't need a warrior anyway depending on what tactic he will go for, but he might maybe want to go for copying my Napoleonic army tactics, so uh, definitely nice to get additional resources. E5 this turn has the opportunity to go for a very nice Einstein play, go for the multimedia, increases culture production, but also um, really boost this economy, and with having those Nobel Prizes, uh, now being at 12 science production and having also some cheap technologies in hand, will make it that maybe he can just every turn go for a Nobel Prize and also score 6th culture with Einstein. 
Marta Bescher this turn seats. And now there is indeed an Iconoclast maybe seated by E5, but also Marta Bescher went for a leader very early, but I think for him it was just a um, completely a nice decision. So, and for E5 maybe um, there would have been some other nice options. So I, my guess would rather be that E5 would have seated it, but also of course Marta Bescher would make sense. And here will uh, now now I will lose James Pot. PV4 will lose Newton. Newton is probably the bigger loss for PV4 than James Watt for me. On the other hand, PV4 is prepared for the one leader that is coming down the road at the moment. So we will have to see which one of us gets hit harder by that. But losing the civil actions that he could have gained now from Newton at the next turn definitely might be a setback. And he might have, maybe would have liked to keep Newton for a little bit longer. Marta Pescher, this turn goes for the rockets, develops them, he uh, makes sure to get stronger now, copies my Napoleonic army tactic, is now 26 strength, and then with his last civil action also takes one copy of endowment. Now it is my turn, and as you can see, I actually see the impact of balance, because this turn I will go for the computers, and then I was just hoping that I will find some way, way to get more culture production, either with Marie Curie or with just building some culture buildings and then with, uh, if I have a balance of 12 that hopefully will make it worth it to have seeded it into the deck. So I push, I'm not the weakest and the event revealed is the immigration and now again if you look back some turns I am still the player with the lowest culture and there would have some been some really nice targets for the terrorism so again I was regretting it a little bit that I discarded it um, earlier on because um, I thought that my position is a bit challenging uh, with the low military action count, with not easily being able to build a lot because of not having the most science for now. I will improve that this turn, but I am behind in culture by my opponents and I felt like I uh, no, have at least nice resource production, but it's not that easily possible for me to catch up for them. And E5 at this point has such strong of a position that I was skeptical that I will be able to finish before him. But before the other opponents, maybe I could still have some nice chances. And who knows, maybe E5 plays it a bit too greedily, could get punished by a war. And this turn, as I said, I will go for the computers. It's an easy way for me to get out of corruption, but I also will play it a bit greedily this turn, because there is the first copy of Air Force. Having one would probably make me safe from wars, um, but I also think getting the science production from the computers is quite nice. If I upgrade both of them, I will be out of corruption, and at the end I made the decision to skip the Air Forces, as it is the first copy. And at the moment, I mean, E5 could go for a bit of a war, but he is running out of population. Um, I mean, not really, but um, yeah, just going for Air Force doesn't give him that much strength. PV4 doesn't have enough military actions. Mata Bescher is probably a player that I have to be afraid of the most. He can go for revolutionary idea, develop military theory, destroy something. At least he has to destroy something and then build a rocket. That could be quite dangerous for me. Um, so no, maybe I could play it safe, delay the computer upgrades, but there are also some Nobel Prizes. And I kind of felt like maybe I need to take a risk in order to catch up in culture and put myself in a position where I may be nicely prepared for some impacts. But if I miss out on the air forces, I could get punished quite a bit with my uh, for my military. So it's definitely a tough decision. At the end, I made a decision to just go for those two upgrades and then take the fast food chains. Now I have quite some nice science production. Hopefully I will be able to prepare for impacts relatively nicely. And I have a wonder that will be decent for me and then from the next turn on, so I can maybe be a, be a bit more careful for my military, but I just wanted to get this going. But I could get punished, and so it's a tricky decision. So I'm not really sure if it was worth it to take this risk, but so far Mata Bashir didn't have that many draws, maybe doesn't have a war available, and uh, also always have to, has to at least fear that maybe I have a chance to get air forces, or maybe, just, uh, maybe there are just also air forces available for me at the next turn, and he can see it already. Of course, that would probably mean that the last two copies will be revealed on his turn, so not that likely, but uh, no. in the end I was willing to take the risk, but I definitely could get punished for it. And with having computers, at least I am better prepared for two leaders, Steve Jobs and Marie Curie. I draw the impact of government, which maybe could be a nice impact, uh, in inhabited territories revealed, but I wasn't willing again to bid too much because I didn't want to leave myself vulnerable to an aggression, meaning that E5 wins it again for two knights, but he has now a fourth colony for his Suez Canal. BB4 will increase his population, will then build one cannon, 
and builds even another cannon, is now 23 strength, making sure to not be the weakest any longer, develops the civil service at a turn before he has taken it for quite expensive but without developing it, but now he will develop it, and I think it helps him definitely to now be at 7 civil actions. He then takes Flaming, Air Forces, and Urban Growth, um, but is willing to delay Flaming in order to get the additional resources from the Urban Growth so that he maybe can afford uh, going for one movie more easily. Then E5 will go for a military alliance with PV4, get some more strength from there. Goes for food upgrades now, goes for bro sports, gets, scores his first Nobel Prize. <clears throat> builds one bro sports, builds one knight, is now 29 strength, takes the patriotism and also the reserves. Also increases his population, so definitely a very solid turn by him. Now I was hoping that there won't be any war or something and I was very happy to see that there is an international tourism offered, but actually E5 is rejecting the pact, interestingly. But it, it um, definitely makes some sense, because Mata Bashir at this point has only one wand. Of course, he goes for Red Cross now, but don't think that is a clear best choice that one could have anticipated. Definitely, um, definitely was a good chance that he will take it, but he will get one more production from the three wonders and has only one himself, so definitely understandable that e5 rejects it, but also understandable, I think, why Mata Bashir offers it to e5, because I have now a strong production, he, at least for now, didn't punish me with a war or anything, and that could mean that maybe he is fearing a little bit that he is running behind, so it could be worth it to take some risks with the packed offer, and I and PV4 just don't have a lot of wonder, so he doesn't lose too much when he offers... Um, the pack maybe won't turn later to one of us. And also E5 has a really strong position. Maybe E5 could think that Marta Bashir is a lesser threat than for example I or PV4, even though I think we also both are not really that much more ahead than, P uh, than Marta Bashir. Maybe a little bit because of a better economy. Um, so um, yeah, so there is definitely uh, some a rightful hope that Mata Bashir can have that maybe that gets accepted, maybe then getting three additional culture reduction could make really a difference, or so I think it's understandable that he uh, um, uh, offers it, but also understandable maybe that E5 rejects it, E5 rejects it, um, depending on how he evaluates the position of Mata Bashir, me and PV4. Mata Bashir will go for the Red Cross, doesn't have the most food, but when he takes one copy of reserves, can still build three stages at the next turn. He will go for the military theory, and interestingly is willing to destroy one temple. If that can build a rocket, gets out of corruption and is now at 43 strength, maybe putting some pressure on all of the opponents, threatening to go for an aggression. Uh, but he is uh, interestingly destroying the religion for that, which will cost him two culture production with Mandela. But uh, yeah, the additional strength definitely could make him a bit threatening. Now it's my turn. I don't want to push the impact of government because for now it's not really looking like a great card, especially Marta Bashir has quite a nice government form at the moment. And this turn, uh, um, it was relatively clear for me what I want to do. I will first build one step of the Red Cross, I don't want to miss out on that, but then to increase my population, I need to play the reserves for food, increase my population, and then I will build one knight without a patriotism, because I would have missed out on one resource, um, even though it would of course be nice to draw three cards, but I will build a knight without it, because I need all of my remaining civil actions to then go for Marie Curie and elect her. I think Marie Curie is still quite nice, giving me three culture production, also the three additional strength are definitely relevant, and then also some additional science productions, so I wanted to get here immediately. I don't necessarily need any of those cards. Getting a copy of Democracy could be nice, but with the Nobel Prizes, maybe it could also be fine to just develop a little more cheap technologies and try to get some Nobel Prizes. And uh, now I'm at 32 strength, and uh, now I'm threatening to go for two air forces. So hopefully there won't be any big danger from a war. Of course, Mata Bashir, if he sees that there are no air forces, could maybe take the risk and hope that I don't get air forces, and then uh, if there are maybe no tanks or rockets, could get bit, could get a bit dangerous. Um, but uh, and maybe in order to somewhat compete, have to destroy something, which would really not be ideal. But uh, no, I, this turn I think can't do a lot more, and this turn was at the end relatively clear for me because I just wanted to have Marie Curie going so that at the next turn I have really again. I've again a lot of free civil actions that I can use. 
I will keep all of my colonization cards so that I can defend against my tapisher. I mean, I could have also defended. No, I don't. Can't defend against him with. Um, I just ca can defend with one H two, one H three colonization card. But I still wanted to keep all of them. And then I draw the impact of technology, which I was happy to see because that could be a good impact against uh, Marta Bichir on PV4. Maybe even better for E5, but he might be out of reach for me anyway. So I was happy about that impact draw. PV4 will increase his population, builds one and drama, then goes for Fleming, goes for Rifeman. Upgrades two of them, has the entrenchments tactic is not 35 strength, and with that makes maybe sure that he doesn't isn't that he doesn't get hit by an aggression from Mata Pesher. Will also build one step of the Red Cross, and if he just goes for one more cannon, he has even more strength. Has also the air forces, so could at some point be a bit threatening. But the problem for him is he can't easily get more military actions. Otherwise, he could be looking to go for a big war. But now it might not be that easily possible for him, especially because he's missing the science to go for air force already the next turn. E5 seeds the arms industry is revealed, and those four additional resources that my partner Matapesher gets will prove to be a bit unfortunate for me, because uh, yeah, that. Those additional resources will increase the strength potential by quite a bit, which uh, no, uh, which we will see at the next at his next turn. E5 this turn will go for Rifeman. Uh, maybe he wants to prepare himself for other tactics than just the Hassar's tactic. Maybe with not knowing whether he gets tanks or not. Also develops the cannons against Gross Nobel Prize. Gets scoring six cards with Einstein again very nicely. And sadly now Mata Pesher with having the four additional resources. Roll, resources from the arms industry is deciding to go for the war with culture against me and sadly he can go for this war without any big risk um, without the additional resources he might have still gone for the war actually because as you can see there are no air forces in the row and he will play his turn first of all with finishing the red cross also and then he will play his turn without taking any card from the row and even without the additional resources, it could have been, I think, a valid option for him to just try this war. But then at least there would be the risk that if one of the last two copies of Air Forces would be revealed, I would be able to win the war. Now, even if an Air Force is revealed on three, sadly, I know it would not be enough for me to win the war. I think I would just be missing two strengths. So um, here... Uh, is basically almost guaranteed to win the war, especially with all the military alliance being out and uh, has a good chance that there are maybe no air forces revealed, which could be a bit annoying for me. At least there's maybe the rockets available, but no, I was of course not too happy to see that uh, the arms industry uh, allowed him to go for a bit of a surprising war because without the additional resources, maybe he could have still gone for it, but at least it would have come with some more risk. Now he is basically guaranteed to win the war. Now it's just a question, how big will it be? And that uh, yeah, war definitely might be disrupting. As you can see, sadly, no air forces revealed, but one of the last uh, remaining copies of tanks, which also could be nice to have, um, to uh, be able to upgrade some of those knights and maybe build one tank to get some strength without having to destroy a lot, because destroying, I think, would be very painful for me, trying to go for a third army. I could, the best thing that I maybe could do would be to go for tanks, Develop them, destroy two things, and then uh, go for one more army. I think maybe I still have also one free civil action to go for the patriotism. That would be the best defense, but it would not be enough to win the war. And so, uh, no. Uh, I, at the end, made a decision that I can't destroy a lot because I had impact of balances in there. There might be other impacts where I would get punished. It would make it a lot harder to build some nice stuff with the fast food chains. So instead of destroying something, I went for the tanks, developed them, and now I can go for one, building one, and also for two upgrades. As you can see, I don't use the patriotism and instead leave myself with two resources. I have two civil actions left. And those two civil actions were a bit tricky to decide because there's the military builder, which could, would give me even more resources that I have available for the military. There is a copy of movies, but I, that one is not really that important because I probably don't have enough resources for it anyway. But the engineering genius could be a very efficient way to get resources as well. Would give me more resources in peaceful lines, which I maybe have to hope for at this point. Because if I get hit by another wall, it might be very bad for me anyway. But with the military build-up, I would be relatively safe from the war. If Marta Pesher maybe goes for another war and upgrades this warrior to swordsman, maybe also destroys something in order to build one more swordsman, he could go up to 62 strength. 
And then there's also this democracy, which could be a very nice, cheap, uh, very nice and cheap way to give me some additional culture production. If I take and develop it already this turn, then I would be uh, also get a Nobel Prize because I developed the tanks already. And no, it was a tough decision because if I just go for taking developing the democracy, I will be able to just threaten 62 strength, meaning with Mata Bashir's award might be the right decision to, for him to go for it, because while he um, maybe only ties in it, making it that we will tie will cause me a lot of destruction. I won't be able to finish the fast food chains, and I think it would be like looking very bad for me then. And so it should be a good decision from PV4, uh, from Mata Bashir to go for it. Um, but yeah, if I play it too safe, I will now lose some culture to the wall. I am behind, and I uh, thought I just have to take some risks. And one problem, if I don't develop the democracy, is the amount of cards that I can hold in hand. In order to be safe from an aggression, I need to keep all defense cards. Meaning, if I want to see the impact of technology, I would have to needed to see that this turn already. However, I would have been weakest, and there are still some bad H2 events that I don't have knowledge about, and I will get stronger this turn. So, um, and with me not drawing any cards or drawing one card when I go for the democracy, I can relatively easily, without too much downside, maybe delay seeding the impact of technology, but not if I need to keep all of those colonization cards in hand. And so at the end, I made a decision to just go for the democracy. It is a bit greedy if Matapa shares another war. Maybe he can just go for it. But I also thought I maybe need to take some risks. I mean, at least I have this wonder, but if I now lose some culture to Mata Bashir, um, I have at least one quite nice impact, an impact of balance with the destruction from Mata Bashir is also fine now. But um, no, I just at the end made the decision to take some risks with getting the Nobel Prize, the culture reduction up immediately, but with not threatening enough strength. But maybe Mata Bashir at least has to be afraid of events like economic progress or maybe freedom of movement, because I, depending on whether he had knowledge about it, I was very really happy to see that with the one draw that I'm getting, I do get another impact that might be seedable, because before my next turn, the age might end. One upside from not taking the military build-up is that it is actually more likely that the age will not end, but Mata Bashir doesn't really have anything to do and can just take a lot of cards. PV4 also might just take a lot of cards, so it's likely that the age will end. And so I was very happy to see that I have now two impacts that I can see it in my last two turns and that uh, maybe could really help me to still have a chance to not lose this game even now when with getting hit by this war. Then PV4 opens the civil unrest, but no one has any unhappy workers. He will destroy a mine to get a bit more strength so that he is not in danger of getting hit by an aggression. Is now at 48 strength, takes the movies, takes the reserves, takes the engineering genius and the military build-up, made the decision to take a look at E5's hand with flaming. And with taking that many cards, it definitely gets more likely that the age will end before my next turn. E5 seeds, and I was very, very happy to see this popularization of science, giving me nine additional culture against Mata Bashir, six against PV4. Uh, that could be really helpful for me to avoid finishing last in this game. Then E5 will go for the tanks. Develops the opera, develops the tanks against Gore's Nobel Prize, so his Einstein has produced him a lot of culture together with those Nobel Prizes. He will then play the patriotism, goes for those upgrades and increases his population at the next turn. Could take and finish the space flight if he wants to and if the wonder is still available, even though it might likely be taken away by PV4, who also still needs a wonder. But E5 maybe could also go for the Empire State Building, so at the next turn can decide if he wants to maybe go for a wonder or rather just improve some impacts. Now there's the big decision, or the big moment. Has Mata Bashir second war? If so, I think it would maybe... Or actually, um, Mata Bashir only can go for the second war if I don't have air forces, so that um, made the decision a little bit less risky. If I have a chance to get air forces, and at least I thought, as we also saw, that if E5 goes for the tanks, or that E5 might go for the tanks instead of air forces, because he has the Hassars, and maybe the tanks is the more important technology for him than the air forces, and if I get the air forces, then Mata Bashir would lose the war. So um, only if I miss out on the air forces, there uh, I only would be able to tie a war. So now it would actually be a bit of a surprise if Mata Bashir goes for war, but he m could maybe still do it to prevent me from finishing my wonder. But now it definitely would cost him quite some culture in the war. So I was happy to see that the air forces will be available for me. Then uh, there is the impact of balance revealed by Mata Bashir. Um, I get plus six against him, which is quite nice. 
You will then take the revolutionary idea, another revolutionary idea, the pros, parts, the urban growth and the engineering at the next turn will be able to develop two technologies and with that improve his impact of tech, also score a Nobel Prize. And with upgrading the warrior to swordsman, he is now at 60 strength and is again quite threatening, especially because I will now lose my H2 cards, meaning making sure that I can defend against him would be quite difficult for me. I could go for an air force, destroy something, but not the tanks um, and build one, but then... Uh, yeah, it would be quite costly. I don't want to lose any of those things. I um, would be, have a worse impact of industry. If I destroy a mine, there could be an impact of arc agriculture in there. So I, at the end, just made a decision that I leave myself vulnerable to a Montopacheur because it would just be too costly because I have some relatively nice peaceful options. I will first start with seeding the impact of industry. The event revealed is the impact of harmony, which is a somewhat fine one for me because it gives me plus four against Marta Pecheur and is the same for me as for PV4. But I was mainly looking against Marta Pecheur because PV4 will be able to go for the space flight and with that probably is out of reach for me. And this turn. Uh, I, as I said, could make myself safe from an aggression, but it would hurt some impacts and... Um, yeah, and going for air forces will also mean that at the next turn I can't go for Nobel Prize and that alone cost me four cult from the Nobel Prize, four cult for the impact of tech and um, also I will improve the impact of industry now and so I miss just out on too much culture so I just gain save more culture than an armed intervention swing I think would be worth it so um, so yeah. Uh, I think it's not the right decision to go for air forces, but I thought about my first ideas after that were to go for either rockets or modern infantry, play the patriotism, get a bit more strength, making myself maybe a bit better prepared for impact of strength, uh, leave, taking the danger away from a potential double aggression from PV4 and E5, and... Um, uh, then if I for, uh, but uh, if I go for the modern infantry, then again I don't have the option to go for Nobel Prize at the next turn. So I thought about taking developing rockets, taking the oil in hand, and then taking the multimedia. But I almost missed out on the clearly best option, which would have been a bit of a blind spot because at the end the fear of a double aggression I think should not be really that big against Mata I can't defend anyway, and the impact of strength could of course be in there, but also might not be in there, I don't have knowledge about it, so it, I think it's just the best to go for this oil, and the benefit about it is that I almost missed out on, because I thought in order to go for a technology this turn and a Nobel Prize at the next turn I need oil, rockets, multimedia, but of course if I upgrade this one, mine Marie Curie gives me one tiny little more science production, meaning that now I have I can even take Rockets Modern Infantry to go for Nobel Prize at the next turn, meaning I can take those two cards now and go for two more upgrades, putting me at 15 resource production, improving my impact of industry by 6, still being able to go for Nobel Prize at the next turn with the impact of tech, still being able to finish the fast food chains, hopefully, and my plan for the next turn was to go for Nobel Prize, play the patriotism, finish the fast food chains, and then probably go for two upgrades from Swordsman to Modern Infantry. There is one danger though, and that is that I don't have knowledge about Blunder, I think, or at least not about both copies, meaning that there is a chance that Mata Bichel will go for a Blunder, which will prevent me from finishing the fast food chains, but I can't really do anything about this anyway, and with this I think I should just, I have to take the risk and just hope that it, uh, maybe there will be no aggression, or if then maybe an armed intervention, which would be bad, but uh, no, I just, I think at this point have to hope that I don't get disrupted by a very bad aggression and because it's just too much, too much safe culture plus 6 for the impact of industry and plus 8 at the next turn because of Nobel Prize and impact of tech comparing to go for air forces compared to going for air forces so yeah, I think that is just too much safe culture Then PV4 will take a look at my hand, and interestingly still goes from aggression, probably doesn't have anything else to do, it takes the defense card away from me, makes it that maybe E5 could now sacrifice with Dimitri Castle in order to go for an aggression. Then PV4 will go for the movies, is able to go for one movie with the efficient upgrade, increasing his culture reduction by quite a bit with flaming, takes the computers, and at the next turn still has enough resources to easily finish the space flight. Then it's E5's turn, luckily doesn't go for an aggression, but I think that would have been a bit unfortunate to get hit by this double aggression. Um, and E5 rather wants to see the strong impact into the deck, the impact of population is revealed, which gives me plus 2 against Marta Pecheur. E5 then goes for the oil, also for mechanized agriculture, 
Yeah, so he won't go for the Empire State Building with me going for those oil upgrades and also with that increasing my science production. I think the Empire State Building definitely got a bit worse for him and instead he will just improve his impacts. Upgrading those mines will give him points with my impact of industry. He goes for Nobel Prize, another sixth culture with Einstein, goes for some upgrades there. So he is just uh, yeah, a very, very balanced and how, uh, balanced civilization. Then there's Marta Bescher, who will go for an armed intervention against me, um, which is not ideal, but I ha had to expect something like this. And he will then play the revolutionary idea, plays another one, can go for two technologies, even the democracy and still not the technology, scoring a Nobel Prize and improving himself for the impact of tech that I'm about to seed into the deck. He then will destroy his last lab, interesting, but he knows that the impact of balance is out and just goes all in onto the bro sports. And then takes the multimedia. And I think my last turn is relatively clear. I see the impact of tech, I have no, no cards in left in hand. The impact of architecture is revealed. Mata Bisher just improved this impact quite a bit with going for those arenas. Um, but luckily I still have one more point in this impact than him. And now I will go for the modern infantry for the rockets. Will play the patriotism. Now I have just enough civil actions left to finish the fast food chains. Maybe I could have thought about destroying something. But I want to get stronger so that the PV4 can't go for free aggression against me. And... Uh, so I think this turn is basically scripted. I will go for the fast food chains and then with the patriotism go for two upgrades, making me a bit stronger. Sadly, not enough to be before E5 for potential impact of strength, because if that impact is in the deck, and no, I'm not that m I'm not that far behind Matabesha any longer with having finished my wonder and having another Nobel Prize scored. But um, with an impact of strength, now he again would be plus 10 against me. So... Um, no, but I have some strong impacts, and uh, at this point I definitely had hopes to at least not finish last, but there are definitely impacts that would also punish me, also the impact of progress, for example, so um, now it will depend on what impacts the others have seeded. PV4 will go for the computers, finishes the fast food chains for 26 points, quite a strong wonder for him, goes for the reserves, builds one movie, and then ends his turn with 21 culture production and 207 culture. With that, is still a bit behind E5, and E5 is just too so nicely prepared for impacts that I think uh, PV4 has not... No, not really great chances to overtake E5, but he's a good lead against me and Marta Bescher, uh, so uh, will likely finish to the second position. The closest might be at the fight for the third place between me and Marta Bescher. I'm behind at the moment, but I have two strong impacts in there that will put me before Marta Bescher, but he also could have some impacts that will, would be quite strong for him. So now we take a look. If uh, I will be able to finish at the third place, or if I will lose the game at the end, the first impact doesn't change anything between me and Marta Bescher, and is a very nice one for E5, putting him at an even bigger lead. The next impact is the impact of competition, and with having built those pro sports and military units, it is quite a strong one for Marta Bescher, giving him plus 8 culture against me. At least I managed to improve this impact a little bit with upgrading to modern infantry at my last turn. So now I'm 16 culture behind him. The next impact is the impact of wonders. That is relatively similar for me and for Mata Bescher. I'm able to catch up one point with that impact. And I was very happy to see the impact of science because that gives me another plus 10 against Mata Bescher. And now there are actually only my impacts left, meaning we will see now the impact of industry, which gives me plus 15, plus 11 against Mata Bescher. And then the impact of technology, which also gives me quite a nice amount. It's not that great for PV4, so I will even catch up some points for him, but there's still quite a gap between us. And at the end, I am happy that at least I will finish this game at the third position. Which is, of course, not an ideal finish, but after getting hit by this war, I definitely feared that maybe this game will end in a last position for me. And yeah, E5 uh, managed this to win this game very nicely. I think was a very nice Einstein game to watch with those Nobel Prizes. Went for the Suez Canal with having no colonies, but that paid off. He went for Sansu into Jan Shishka, and then at the end was still nicely able to use the Colossus to go for a colonization game. And uh, yeah, and PV4 managed to nicely sneak this journalism in, which produced him a lot of value with Newton. And even though he got the collate, still managed to build the civilization up nicely and at the end managed to finish before me. If maybe I wouldn't have get, gotten disrupted by the war, it could have gotten closer between us, but I mean, I took some risks in my play in H3 in order to maybe have chances for a better placement, and 
uh, no, then it was. Uh, I have to expect that I maybe get punished somehow. I think it was a bit unfortunate with the arms industry, as that was uh, no, a, bit, a little bit of a surprise, of course, for me. But at a turn before, if Martin Bichel would have had a war, I think he could have gone for one already this turn. Um, I think at least if I remember it correctly, so I could have already gotten punished by there, so I just played it a bit risky, and I think I got punished, but I could have also gotten punished even more potentially, so at the end I think I have to no, accept this third place. Um, I think at the end I also got a bit lucky with my impact draws. Early in the game I think it was a little bit unlucky with the pestilence that uh, really set me back by a bit, having to destroy this mine, um, but uh, no. And then missing out on the foray, but of course missing out on the foray was something that again, um, yeah, I knew that it was risky to seed it in, but the pestilence I think was a bit unfortunate, but I at least recovered and managed to still build up a nice economy with James Watt, but was a bit behind in culture then, regretted it to not have put in the terrorism into the deck, which maybe also could have helped me to get into a better position, um, yeah, but at the end I am Happy that at least I finished at a third position, which is not ideal, but there are a lot of games to come, and maybe at the end it could make a difference if I finish in third in this game or fourth. No, so that was the first game, and there's actually also already one three-player game finished between the three of uh, my opponents. I uh, am definitely the slowest player in this group. I mostly play my turns in the evening and the other players are a lot more active during the day, so they already managed to finish the three-player game, and now we can take a look at the outcome of this three-player game and at the current standings. And as you can see, the th in the th three-player game between my opponents, Marta Pecheur managed to win against PB4 and E5, which is maybe a good outcome for me, because the player that won the four-player game has now lost, while the player that lost the four-player game has now won, meaning there's no one player, at least so far, who is really getting a big lead in the standings, and it's a bit more divided between all of my opponents, which might be good for me, especially with having had not the greatest start, but for so far there haven't been that many games finished. I have now not the ideal placement in my first game, but seven games are to come, so I still have a lot of opportunities to score a lot of points. Um, but yeah, of course... I, um, if I get another not so great placement, it could already get a bit tricky. So the next game that we will be seeing soon, as you can see, this four-player game is already in H4. Um, that will be quite important to maybe score some points in the next four-player game. E5 is, even though losing the three-player game, still in the lead thanks to his win in the four-player game. PB5 and P Marta Bichel have the same amount of points. I am in the last position, but I have one last game finished, so if I get a nice result my next game, I could already be completely back in the running. Alright, then I hope it was an interesting first game of the World Championship Finals for you, and I hope you're looking forward to the rest of the games. It's definitely exciting to play in the finals again, and it will be very interesting to see which player at the end will be able to uh, win the title. And yeah, with that, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.